Our last speaker will be uh, Xiang Cheng from Berkeley, and uh, he will talk about joint work with Chatterjee, and Battery, and uh, Jordan. Yeah, uh, morning everyone. I'm Xiang, and today I'll be giving a talk on underdumped launch of MCMC. This is a joint work with Nilajri Chatterjee, Peter Bartlett, and Michael Jordan from EC Berkeley. So here's the motivation. Once again, we are trying to sample from distribution P star, which can be written as e to the power of minus u of x for some potential function x. We assume that at any point we can compute the gradient uh, of u uh, of x. Um, and furthermore, we are going to assume that u of x is uh, m strongly convex and l smooth. Uh, in other words, l Lipschitz gradients. So this is a very common problem in uh, Bayesian inference and online learning, for example. So what is underdamped Langevin diffusion? Uh, underdamped Langevin diffusion can be described uh, uh, by this uh, stochastic differential equation right here, uh, where u, as I said earlier, is a potential function. Uh, b is the standard Brownian motion. The stationary distribution of the above diffusion is uh, p star of x comma v, which is e to the power of minus ux minus Euclidean norm of v squared. So if you want to generate a sample uh, from just p star of x, what you can do is just sample from p star of x comma v, and then uh, discard your v. Then the x is just uh, p star of x. So it's, and it's worth uh, spending a few more moments considering this uh, stochastic differential equation because it really is quite intuitive. The variable x can be thought of as a position variable, and the variable v can be thought of as the momentum or velocity variable. Uh, in particular, uh, v, uh, as I said earlier, v is like the momentum, so the first line makes a lot of intuitive sense, right? It's almost by definition, your position evolves according to your velocity. dx t is v t dt. On the other hand, if you look at the second line, the update for your velocity consists of three components. The first component, minus vt dt can be thought of as a uh, friction term, right? It says uh, you're losing, uh, as time goes on, you're losing memory of your uh, gradients from long ago. The second term, uh, minus u of x t dt can be thought of as an acceleration term. In particular, if, you, if we think of u as defining a uh, potential energy, then uh, you know, in physics, the gradient of your potential energy function uh, gives the force. So minus u of x t is really an external force that is acting on your particle and uh, accelerating it you know, in that direction. And finally, uh, Brownian motion is just Brownian motion. So uh, uh, next, it, it may also make a little sense to compare and contrast uh, the SDE for underdamped Langevin diffusion with that of overdamped Langevin diffusion, which you guys are quite familiar with by now. Um, so you can see that uh, in overdamped Langevin diffusion, the uh, gradient u of x, right, it, it acts more like a velocity instead of an acceleration being added directly to your uh, position. Uh, on the other hand, uh, gradient u of x, as I said earlier, in underdamped Langevin diffusion, acts on your velocity, and then in turn, your velocity acts on your position. Um, and finally, if you cover up uh, the dBt term uh, for both, uh, as has been pointed out a couple times earlier, overdamped Langevin diffusion just ends up looking like uh, looking like gradient descent, right? it's gradient flow. Uh, and if you look at underdamped Langevin diffusion and you cover up the Brownian motion term, the remaining uh, dynamic is really like you know gradient flow with momentum. At least cosmetically, it, it, it looks like an interesting relationship. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. So uh, that was the stochastic uh, differential equation, which is not really implementable in practice. Right? In practice, uh, if you want to get an MCMC algorithm out of it, you need to discretize the differential equation somehow. And the discretization could be represented as this uh, stochastic process. And the only difference between this stochastic process and the stochastic, uh, diffusion earlier, uh, stochastic differential equation earlier is in the gradient uh, u term. 
So if I were doing exact diffusion, what I'll have here is gradient U of x. But in the, discreti uh, in the discretization of gradient U of x k delta, where delta is your step size. And k delta is the time of the uh, last discrete time step at time t. So th there is a la little lag right, between um, the true gradient that you want to follow and, and the discretized gradient. And uh, I would like to stress two things. One is that this discretization is not, the, uh, it's not exactly the naive Euler discretization. If it were the naive Euler discretization, then instead of Vt here, we'll have V of k delta as well. Uh, th th this fact is uh, quite important because uh, the, the rate is uh, considerably slower if we were using the naive Euler discretization. And the other uh, thing to note is that uh, this discretization is exactly implementable uh, algorithmically, and uh, you can compute it in time, uh, essentially the same as the amount of time you need to compute the gradient of u. So it's fast. And this is the main theorem of our paper. So suppose you want to, uh, if you let Pn be the distribution of the nth iterate, and we want to guarantee that uh, the Wallerstein distance between Pn and P star is bounded by epsilon, then it suffices to take n number of iterations to be root d over epsilon. Contrast this with the result um, by Dermus and Mullins in 16, which uh, was the best uh, convergence rate for uh, unadjusted overdamped Langevin diffusion under the same set of assumptions of uh, smoothness and strong convexity. So their rate is, if you want epsilon Wasserstein error, you need to take number of time steps uh, to be d over epsilon squared. So th both of these are upper bounds, right? Uh, no, so, so we don't know if you could do better with over them, but this is the best known result. And so uh, we have a quadratic improvement in d and epsilon uh, for underdamped uh, over overdamped. And the intuition for the quadratic improvement is as follows. Consider uh, the overdamped Langevin diffusion, uh, consider the underdamped Langevin diffusion. The most problematic part in the discretization, the thing that is most difficult to anticipate, is always a uh, gradient u of x, right? Because your function, uh, I mean, you know, it's convex and smooth, but otherwise it's kind of arbitrary. A and but, uh, because of the smoothness assumption, the approximation, uh, the discretization error in gradient u of x really uh, is bounded by uh, the discretization error in, in approximating your, your, in anticipating your position, right? Uh, so, so in both uh, the overdamped and underdamped analysis, uh, the, discret the uh, discretization error ends up being bottlenecked by the error in your uh, position approximation. So on the left, we see the sample path of um, overdamped Langevin diffusion. Uh, in overdamped Langevin diffusion, recall that the Brownian motion term is added directly to your uh, position variable xt. Right? The xt is uh, something something plus dBt. And Brownian motion is very irregular. So it looks like a rather messy thing down here. Because of that, the discretization error scales as roughly delta to the power of 3 halves. On the right, we see the sample path of under the damped Langevin diffusion. Here, Brownian motion is not added directly to your position, rather it's added to your velocity, right? And then your position evolves as velocity, so dxt equals vt dt. And vt is uh, almost surely bounded, and it's in fact bounded by some nice, uh, nice term. So you can see that the sample path of x is a lot smoother in under the damped. And like, at least personally to me, that's the main intuition for why uh, our discretization error is much better at delta squared compared to delta two, 3 over 2. Yes. Uh, oh, one minute. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry, I thought you had a question. Um, all right, so uh, I'll talk quickly. Uh, also, all, uh, the, our result also extends to the case when you cannot compute the exact gradient. Um, so consider the following discretization. Instead of having gradient u of x k delta, now you have gradient hat u of x k delta, where gradient hat is a noisy estimate of your true gradient. Um, we assume that it is uh, zero mean, uh, it's unbiased, and it has bounded variance. And so our convergence rate is uh, you, to get epsilon error in Wasserstein distance. You need to uh, number of iterations to be the max of root d over epsilon. And 
uh, d sigma square of epsilon squares, uh, recall that uh, the variance of your gradient is d sigma square. So it's the max of these two terms. Uh, and in a similar setting for overdam longevity diffusion, you need number of iterations to be d, the max of d over epsilon square and d sigma square over epsilon square. So the d sigma square, d sigma square over epsilon square term is the same for underdamped and overdamped. In the case of a very large error, we don't have an improvement. However, if sigma for some reason is very small, then uh, we, we potentially have a speed up over, uh, over that longevity diffusion. And I was going to do a proof sketch, but I don't think I have time. Uh, if you're interested, come talk to me at the poster. Uh, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, so I think the different uh, the dis different discretization is only possible because I'm using a momentum method. Like I said, if I if I were adding Brownian motion to my position directly, uh, which would be the case if I don't uh, if I wasn't using a momentum method, then um, my sample path would be a lot more difficult to anticipate.